we've got a, a scenario in which we need to set up a firewall for our business owner. And we've got a we've got a server. It's a twenty twelve server. And we've got a couple VMs. We've got a VM with an open source email server. So we've got to get uh, uninitiated, unrequested SMTP uh, traffic through our firewall to our open source, our um, email server. We also have another virtual machine and it's going to run a web server. And it's also going to have a connection to PayPal, a PayPal portal. So this will require both HTTP as well as HTTPS services and again the firewall is going to become uninitiated unrequested from internal because we know that's how firewalls work they're always open internally outward and inward but from the outside unrequested unsolicited it's always stopped so we've got to open the firewall so that this can happen and then we have an SQL database we have another virtual machine and SQL and this will be for accounts payable customer service etc we'll we'll use it. we'll take a look at that and we're gonna hook up our VMs right into our RV 80082 uh, different VMs and we're gonna hook them right into our Ethernet ports each VM will get its own and of course you have a basic understanding of Hyper-V and of course the host the 2012 a host server will also plug into the RV082. So you can you can see how we're going to connect it up. What we have to deal with is the firewall out here. So we have a firewall out here that we have to now adjust so that we can allow unsolicited, unrequested, such as SMTP. We also have to do HTTP and HTTPS. And we may have to look at how we're going to deal with SQL. Most cases we're going to have to do RDC so that business owners and assistant managers can remote desktop into the VM and access SQL information, database information, etc. So we're going to have to look at a couple services that we're going to have to open up in order to get them through the firewall and its pre-configured settings. This is the general settings of your firewall and we're going to take a brief look at this get familiar with these basic firewall settings you sh you should know what they are and why they're here and should they be enabled and disabled a great way to start is go to the context sensitive help bring it over here and start reading about what each of these settings are this is pretty standard you need to understand them so take some time and read these we're going to move on to access rules. In a home router, we use port forwarding. And port forwarding allows very granular opening and controlling of our firewall, allowing outside traffic inside in a very granular and controlled way. In a business router, we're going to use the same idea, but we're going to use access lists. This is an access, this is our access rules that we presently have. If you'll notice, it always, very. the first one is very important. This allows any traffic from the LAN, from any source to any destination, and it's always on. So, any traffic coming within the LAN can go out and back in with no restrictions. Notice the second one. Deny all traffic. Uh, on the WAN interface. So anything coming from the WAN that has not been requested or been required by the internal network is going to be dropped from any source and any destination always. So the first access rule says if you're within the network and you want to go out, you can do whatever you want. But if you're without and you're trying to come within, you're stopped. Notice that our, fire, our firewall can be applied to either WAN input. So if we're doing a dual WAN, which we'll be doing later, the firewall can be applied to one or the other or both. So let's add our, our next access list rule. 
we're going to allow we're going to drop down our menu to SMTP you can see TCP 25 port 25 we have the option of logging packets that match this rule. We don't want to do that because if we have a lot of email, we're going to end up with a huge log file. So that doesn't even make sense. So we're going to turn that off. Do not log that traffic because it is traffic that we want. So we want the access rule to allow WAN. So we're going to choose a WAN input. We're going to choose WAN1, which is the one we're actively using right now. Now we really don't know what email server is going to be sending our email server em email information so we're going to leave this we really don't care what email server sends information to our email server but we do have an email server that we want it to go to so we're going to say single and then we're going to type in the IP address of our email server so we've typed in the email the actual IP address of our email server so let's take a look we're going to allow outside traffic smtp port 25 we're not going to log it it can it will be coming through wan one we really don't care the source ip in other words it could be many email servers sending our email server email information but we do know the destination of our email server and we want it only to go to that one now the schedule we're going to leave that on always or we could choose to allow only during daytime hours etc you can see the, your options here and we're gonna save and it's gonna refresh so we're gonna say OK and so let's go back and check our work so now we can see we have two allows another access rule okay at the top allow SMTP port 25 from the WAN the source we really don't care what email server out on the internet sends us email but we do care where it goes to once it gets to our LAN. We're going to allow it to always happen. And so now, you, again, you can see we've added this exception, this access rule, this exception, so that now SMTP traffic can come into our email server. So let's add another one. We have some more here to do. We're going to allow. We're going to allow HTTP 80. And we're not going to log this traffic because it is it is requested we want this traffic in the source interface will be our WAN WAN 1 in this case we really don't care who is coming what the source IP is so we'll put any we do care about where it's going to go because we do know its destination on our LAN so here we've typed in 172.16.0.110 is the IP address of our web server and we're going to allow it always and we could we could adjust the scheduling but we're gonna leave it as it is save and say okay and we'll go back and take a look at our rules now so now notice we get these priorities so we can also set priorities which one has higher priority again allow HTTP 80 on the WAN interface from any source could be any customer its destination very distinct only goes to one computer on the land and always allowed and let's go back to add this time we're going to choose HTTPS 443 we're not going to log you're kind of getting the idea now uh, the source we really don't care of the source and here's an area that we may use single for example we may know the portal web server we may know um, we're connecting a PayPal portal to our web server and we may know that information so if that is known then we're gonna put that information in it's just gonna tighten up the firewall so if we do know the PayPal portables portals IP address we're gonna pop it in there that way it's just a little bit tighter but in this case we don't so we're gonna leave it any and we know our we do know our IP address and of course it's going to go to our web server 172.16.0.110 and we're going to save say OK go look at our access rule and now we can see HTTPS 443 is allowed oops we forgot to change so I need to go back and edit that so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on this I'm going to go back and edit that. That should have been WAN1. Save again. 
and now it looks right. Okay, from WAN1, HTTPS, any, goes to the web server, always. Our last one we're going to add. So when you pull down the drop down box, you can look and you can see that uh, 3389 for RDC is not here. So if the managers want a remote desktop through this firewall, they're not going to be able to with this drop down list. So we're going to actually have to create this service. We're going to choose service management. We're going to give it a name. And it is a TCP protocol. And it's going to be from 3389 to 3389 and that will meet the requirements for a remote desktop so once I type those in I'm gonna add to the list and I'm gonna say OK now come back to the drop down menu and I can scroll down here to RDC and you can see that it's set up for a 3389 to 3389 we are not gonna log off log because these are traffic that we really want we're going to set the interface to WAN 1. The source IP, because we really don't know what IP address the laptops will be, we could set this up. A range, but we won't. We'll leave this. But we do know the SQL server, so we will put that information in. So we'll type in 172.16.0.115, and that will be the SQL server. And that way they can remote in. We'll leave this. Uh, we're going to tighten this up. We're not going to say always. Uh, we're going to say intervals from we're going to tighten up the rdc interval uh, scheduling just because most people are going to be sleeping late at night and we really don't want people trying to hack the rdc to the e sql server so we're going to put a restriction on it from six in the morning to six in the afternoon and it'll be every day but there's going to be a time limitation on that and I had to modify that to 2300 because 2300 is military time and that indicates whether it's AM or PM. So this is 0600 would be the AM, 2300 would be 11 PM. We're going to leave it every day and save. Say OK. So here we are with our access rules. We say we're going to now allow RDC 3389 WAN 1 any source. Uh, it is going to go to the SQL server and it has a time restriction and so now we have four access rules that we've added to our additional standard firewall that's going to allow the traffic from the WAN into the LAN and with it with some granular and some control we can also see they have a nice little content filter so you can enable blocked forbidden domains and you can pop in domains let's say facebook or whatever that you don't your internal employees you don't want them going to those sites you can also enable by keywords so you can put in various keywords you can turn this one on and so these are nice features that allow you to quickly add a little bit of a restriction on your internal web surfing so if that is needed and again you can schedule those that kind of content filtering so we've added facebook.com you can now save and I click back to system summary and I'm gonna scroll down and you can see that we now under access rules we now have four new rules set so this is where we can 